Peace, my brothers and sisters. We are live. Altbase show brought to you by Altbase.nz. Show number 15. What a cool number. Mm -hmm. What a cool... Hey, mm -hmm. I That's know, right? Cool, yeah. That's pretty cool, yeah. That's pretty cool. And uh, Altbase show happens here in the Altbase studio in the beautiful Fitianga. What a beautiful place to be. Um, if you want to get in touch with us, if you want to run your own podcast, or webinars, live meetings... Whatever you're up to, you can get in touch, altbase.nz, send us a message, and we'll get you sorted. We do video productions, digital marketing, social media management, and we run this beautiful show that the community is loving. So if you guys are loving it, we're loving it even more. Okay? It's a special night for us because I have Christine on my left side. Hello. Yeah. The best night. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, Christine? I'm good, thank you. I'm good. How are you guys? So good. Saturday night? Yeah. Party. 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 And we have the pleasure to have these two personalities here, these two awesome guys, Chris Bailey and Paul Martin. Nice to be here. Yeah, nice. Great to be here. Yeah. Thanks for inviting us, man. Yeah, Thank absolutely. You. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Thanks for stocking the bar. Oh, man. <laughs> it's, one of the, it's one of the conditions for us. We check. Do you guys drink? <laughs> <laughs> and then you can come to the show. Oh man, now, it's awesome to be here. It really is, and um, yeah, we're stoked. I mean, we we um, played together as a two piece um, as the Stalkers for, for quite a few years, and then Chris has been in Ireland for oh, donkeys, 12, years. twelve years or so. So yeah, we're just really enjoying getting back together and playing some music together. So absolutely stoked to be here in Fiddy tonight, man. What a start! Nice. So so how how did that come together? When when did you guys meet? What's 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 the story? Oh, I was pretty young. I think when I met you, I was still at yeah, school. Yeah, we were, we were yeah we were both pretty young. I um, was in a heavy metal band called Valhalla, yeah. and Paul kind of took us under his wing and uh, I had wings back then. Yeah, he did have <laughs> wings back then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Blowfly wings. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't angel wings or anything. No. no, but no, we were both in the metal scene in Hamilton um, back in the day, and Chris had a kick ass band called Valhalla, and I had a radio show called The X Attack, and it was you know easy to play their music because they were cool. Right. And, um, yeah, well, we, we thought sort of we were pretty cool. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. we were cool man. That's how we you start. You've got to believe in yourself, yeah. right? Yeah. If you don't think yeah. you're cool. It's hard to make other oh, people we think you we are. We thought that we were more than cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So great day. So we've known each other for quite a number of years now, and and right. you know, Chris has been off doing music and and performing um, a lot of solo stuff. He's done a, a few tribute acts as well. Um, yeah, John Lennon, a long way. Yeah. John Lennon and a Beatles show. Ah, oh, yeah. Um, Jim Morrison and a Doors show, right? Yeah, and uh, Neil, Diamond. Neil Diamond and a Neil really Diamond. and what else? Oh, Neil, Neil Diamond. Finn. I do like Neil Diamond. Have you done a yeah, Finn yeah, tribute? The Finn with oh. Simon and uh, yeah, few others. Ah. Man, I love those stories from like uh, actors who get to to you know to to do like Jim Morrison, all those guys, and they get into mm. the character. The character, absolutely. Do um, you go through some of that when you when you? Well, when I did Jim Morrison, I was still pretty young, so I definitely got into character. You know, like. No. <laughs> <laughs> you made it through your 27, you made sure to, oh, to, to yeah. pass that. They yeah. threw me a party when I hit 27. That's for sure. <laughs> then I made it, but uh, yeah, no, I, I definitely got into character for that one. But we would with the Beatles as well. Mm. Um, you know, this, was, these are all show. many, many years ago. Yeah. I was doing yeah. the tributes, but uh, they, they were good fun to do back then because a lot of people weren't doing them, but now, of course, every man and his dog's doing them, and it's like, yeah. Well, what was the, the, the Beatles song that you would love to play that probably most people wouldn't know, but you were like, that's the shit, I'm going to play the song no matter what? Uh, that, that, like an unknown Because they're one. all epic, but like, people yeah, what was have your, this... What was your song? Oh, my song was always something... Oh. Yeah, because that's my oh, favourite song. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it always has been, you know. Yeah. Um, but when I was in Ireland, I, I played on a in a in like a festival for Beatles stuff, and um, I played at the Cavern as well, actually, in Liverpool. Wow. So, yeah, that was a pretty cool day. Did you play Beatles song in the Cavern? I played, I did like four sets. Sheesh. No way. Yeah. yeah, well, this is in the Cavern pub, Yeah. and it, I just happened to be there. And um, so you played four sets because you happened to be there. Well, a guy, pretty cool. a guy in the band recognized me because he'd seen me play in New Zealand a few years earlier. And, oh, wow. Uh, and so I got up and played with them. And then the manager said, Oh, you can get up and play with this guy. And then oh. the next guy comes on. It's like a Sunday, so they have about four or five artists. And then the 
That kind of prostituted you out in a way. Yeah. Yeah. But then I got to go and play in the Cabin Club with the right. Beatles band yeah. that was, because of course there's about 3,000 in 27 Beatles bands yeah. in England, you know. But, uh, <laughs> this is the Cavern Beatles or whatever they call them, and wow. I got to go and do a set with them, so that was cool. Sweet. Oh, man. I see you shirt, Leo. I had a um, Ramones tribute band for a while. That's really right. Called the Ramones, yeah. <laughs> we just changed, changed the M to an N, had man. the same logo and everything, had a big backdrop, and um, we, we all had um, little black wigs. Except for our bass player who had the black hair. Yeah, but yeah. But we yeah, did the yeah. whole thing. We had a long, skinny singer and really? the whole look. And I had um, <sighs> a stocking arrangement on my arm, so I had no tattoos. <laughs> Me. And I had, a, I had to get a you guitar built custom. Guitar, right, I had didn't you? build a guitar to look like Johnny Ramone's guitar. Downstroke? Oh, wow. All downstrokes, bro. Jeez. Very fast hi hats. You should have, yeah. <laughs> you should have seen my forearm muscles back in the day. Yeah, it was great fun, man. It was, I, I love I love the Ramones, and it was actually the very first concert I ever saw. I was fifteen. I saw the Ramones play in Wellington. Wow. Yeah. What what year was that? Oh, I knew you were gonna ask that. Come it's on, like, come on, come on, it help me. It was like nineteen seventy eight or something like that. Seventy eight. Yeah, you say? yeah. So that's the start of the thing. That's no, no, seventy eight yeah. or eighty seven. No, no, seventy eight. Right right right. Seventy eight, man. Shit. So that's I'm like old. the yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. road to ruin. He's eighty seven. I'm eighty seven. That's right. I'm eighty seven. Yeah, because because I'm just thinking. I think like they released first album what seventy four, seventy six. So you got yeah, early days. Yeah, man. Ah, uh, Tommy on the drums. Yep. DD on. Yep. Yeah, it was the whole. It was the full package. Oh, yeah. I think Paul, was, Paul seemed pretty much everybody. Everyone. And my second show yeah. after that was Cheap Trick. Oh yeah. And a friend of mine in Australia, they're touring Aussie at the moment. He's the tour manager for them. I'm like, dude, oh, that was my second ever show. That was amazing. Same ah. same venue in Wellington, and it was like the, a few months later, seventy eight, seventy nine, something like that. Man, um, oh, very when, old. Yeah. What a place, say, like Wellington for you guys. It must be like the. Uh, the shit. Oh, Auckland had more impact for well, international. I, I lived in Wellington of, in the early right. days. Went to school. My dad sh um, was a postmaster, so we shifted around a lot. But sort of finished my high school and got my first band in Wellington and and started enjoying the local scene. There's bands like Strike Master in Tokyo and all sorts of cool bands, um, and and they were really influential. And then Nightshade came along. And I remember taking my band Tyrant to see them, and we were just like schooled, schooled, sitting there going, "Oh man, we're so bad. These guys are amazing." And then I got offered a gig with them and, and joined them, and ended up playing uh, in Nightshade for a couple of years. And so when yeah. you moved to Hamilton, yes, yeah. when I moved to Hamilton. So yeah, good, good times. Good times. Nice. And how was the scene in Hamilton at the time? Scene in Hamilton was pretty good. Yeah, it was, it was great in those yeah, days. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It yeah. was actually the place to be in the North Island. Hillcrest Island, Tavern. Right? I mean, Cold Chisel used to come to yeah. town. <laughs> Midnight Oil. Midnight Oil. Uh, Hoodoo Gurus. I saw the Hunters and Collectors there, and yeah. that, was a, that was one of the gigs that really probably knocked me out of the, the whole world revolves around metal. You know, I just went and saw them, and I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Ooh, <laughs> that's, that's it. That's it. <laughs> Sounds like something I want to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe. It was on the cut tour, eh? Was, what a show, eh? And I was just going, wow, you know? Do you guys remember the first album you got when I you do. were a child? I do, because it's... Um, I was quite lucky to be born in New Zealand. My parents got married and uh, had quite an extended honeymoon. Like in those days, you did that con ticky thing, eh? You know, where you backpack around the, half the world and sleep in tents and, you know... And I was nearly born on the plane and on the way back, apparently. But it was like, I made it back. But you made it. They bought this tape of Abbey Road in Spain, and I've still got it. And I've got, I don't know, probably about 10 copies of Abbey Road in different formats. But this tape, and it's the old brown tape, it still sounds the best out of all of them. Yeah. You know? And uh, yeah, and it's all in Spanish now. And the, the writing, you know? Like, and... Um, and the interesting thing about that is it opens with Here Comes the Sun, ah. which is usually it's come together, isn't it, on every road? Every road? Yeah. Am I correct? Come together? Yeah, so they swap the two, yeah. the song that opened the second uh, side with the, the first that was obviously the big Spanish hit, obviously, so, yeah. Right. So. It's funny because mm. when you go on, on Spotify, the, the, the first song, like the one with more, more plays is... is here comes the song. Oh, of course it is. And it's such a good Crazy, song. Yeah. Mm. Should we yeah. play that tonight? Why not? Woo! Do you remember it? No. 
Okay. So, so, <laughs> so <laughs> definitely play it. Have another drink and play somewhere it. There, yeah, it's somewhere there. So just before I forget, um, we're having a great chat here, and these guys will be playing pretty soon at Smitty's, nine, nine-ish. Is that, is that the thing just after the rugby? Yeah. yeah. So we nice. prefer it to start at nine, mm-hmm. but uh, it'll be nine twenty. And because we're having a great chat, yeah. so you know mm. we're gonna let this flow, and then mm-hmm. these guys are gonna go to Smitty's and have a mean jam. So if you're chilling on the couch right now, it starts to get 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 the the jacket letter ready for soon because there's gonna be some good music, some good rock and roll happening at Smitty's. Shout out to Fleur, love you, Fleur. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, we're looking forward to it. Yeah, me too. That's me cool. too, man. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. um, we just Chris just has this amazing repertoire of every song ever every cool song ever written so um you know he just busts out all these songs and and some of them i know which is a lot of you know. yeah unfortunately i'm getting a bit older and i can't remember most <laughs> of the songs <laughs> but so they just now pop out is, there's you know? just a big huge list of great songs that are fun to play that people love to hear in pubs when they're mm. yes. out for a night you know so the interesting thing now is uh, two very dear friends of ours the harpy brothers like the same as me we've come back during the COVID and with to live in New Zealand again and uh, and they're two of the most incredible musicians this country's ever put out yeah especially Campbell you know he's yeah, how, how would you describe him yeah jazz school monster frightening jazz school. Yeah, frightening <laughs> played with <laughs> the best. instrument every oh. instrument what's the every instrument, instrument. Called? oh is that an oboe I think oh. I can master it yeah. Yeah. he'll just pick it up and he's already got it yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow those guys but uh, yeah so but because they're used to being really regimented, Christian used to play in Herbs, so eh? he was the drummer mm-hmm. for Herbs for a long time, and those guys were wow. like, yeah, you know. And um, she had three drummers from Herbs in my bands over the years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I had Gordon and Joel for many years. God, I love the Herbs. And wow. uh, yeah. Gordon was their classic drummer, you know, like, and uh, well, that rhythm section of Gordon and Charlie was something else, you know. And Christian now, of course, and of course, old Grant Pukaroa. Oh, of course, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I played with him too. Oh, <laughs> you shouldn't have trusted me, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's living in Aussie, playing and singing, yeah, and he is, still yeah, being he's an awesome he's musician. So. He's an incredible musician. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool when musicians that we know crack it somewhere. You know, yeah. it's the best feeling. Yeah. Um, like uh, w- with my other band, we, we took um, Alien Weaponry out when they were Ooh. two of them were still thirteen. They were thirteen, thirteen, and fifteen at the time, and um, I put my foot down and went, "No, we we want well, I'd, we, want we gotta guys. have these guys on our tour." And we did like um, half a dozen shows with them, and they were amazing. And obviously, look at them now; they're just like they're touring Europe as we speak for the probably the third time or fourth time. Mm. They so have cool. they have a great connection with with um, Soul Sax Plus, which is a which is a duo here from the Coromando. Oh, I know Soul Sax Plus. Yeah, and, yeah, and, and, yeah, yeah. and Janie. Yeah, wow. So they have they're this still going. Brilliant. So that's that's the story. Uh, Paul Lee, when I came to Fitianga, um, they knew I was a drummer. And uh, they invited me to play with the Mercury Bay Jazz Big Band. So that's how we met. Wow. And then uh, I was working with Hospitality, and then Paul Lee was teaching, because he's, he's amazing, he was teaching a lot of instruments at the Mercury Bay Area School. And then he came to me and he said, oh, I teach drums. I'm actually not a drummer, but I, I well, those guys, like, like yeah, the yeah, way you yeah, mentioned, yeah, they can yeah, play yeah. anything. So he was teaching the drums, and then he comes to me and say, I'm going to retire. I think you should, you know, you should get a job and... and, and Start cool. teaching the drum. So man, he he opened the doors for me to to get involved with the Mercury Bay Area School, and now like I got a full time job, and I've been doing that for six years. So Paulie and Janie, very special people, and Helen Lee, the isn't the, the conductor. Isn't you know? it awesome yeah, how, how yeah, musicians yeah. help musicians to help other musicians to help oh, just children yeah. and, and and just just spread I, them love. I've had a, yeah. a weird thing happen to me recently. I was uh, opening a restaurant in Bongamata. And I got a phone call from an old mate of mine. His name is Adrian Botting. Remember Adrian? And he's <laughs> now then and there. But he he put me into my first rock band at fourteen, you know. Wow. And trained me up, and uh, and he's at the school down there. So you guys could probably connect and. Yes, that would be great. Yeah, absolutely. I'm just gonna get some pizza for us. That oh, would yeah. be cool, eh, Christine? Yeah, take yeah the I lead. like seeing this like, cause Waka, I'm not the musician. I'm yeah. the, I'm, I get to answer. I, I get to ask all the questions, and yeah. I guess like non musicians. Yeah, Christine. yeah. So I like to ask the questions, but I like it that you know you guys have a cool community, and 
like, oh yeah, I've played with him. Oh yeah, he's cool. And yeah, I like, mean, that's so cool. New Zealand's only so big. Oh you know, yeah, and, yeah. And well, wow, we were. Once you get to a, a, a certain level and you're playing in front of people, then you're gonna bump into those folks here, there, and everywhere. So it's um, it's a small, it's a, it's a great community. It's a, it's a small and a tight community. Yeah, that's, uh, that's cool. I think the thing with the Hamilton community, when Paul and I were first sort of starting to play together, and then I was still pretty young, but um, for those that those years, eh, that kind of almost a decade, eh, it was like the rock years, and Hamilton was the place of yeah, rock. Definitely, yeah, definitely, yeah. We all yeah. had our <coughs> leather pants and leather jackets. And <laughs> yeah, and yeah, well, we've only just, um, my family and I just moved from Hamilton like two years ago, so we um, actually know a few people who know, I think, is it your son who's the drummer for Devil Skin? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, so yeah. one of uh, my friends was his flatmate, so that's how I, I'd already heard of you guys before. Right, it's yeah. a small world. Yeah, very small. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. But no, it's cool. Oh, thank you. Ooh, yeah, it's neat, and it's been it's been amazing. I mean, I've been in bands <clears throat> for most of my life, yeah. and and I have to say, it, there's always been drummer issues. <laughs> 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 so I grew my own, and yeah. it's just like fantastic. He's you know Nick's the best drummer I've ever played with, and he's unreal. He's unreal, and he's 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 one of these musicians. I'd love to say he got it from me, but he didn't. <laughs> but he can pick up anything and and just play. play. Yeah. So like, <clears throat> um, we, when I first sussed this out, we we had a piano, and we we um, got him a piano for doing well at school, and he got to be head boy at Melville High, and yeah. he did really well. And got two scholarships to university, and so we got him this piano, and he just, oh, that's C, so that's okay, and he just started freaking playing it. Yeah. And it really gutted me because <laughs> I thought he didn't get that from me. No. <laughs> well, his mum's quite artistic as well, but yeah. he's just he's like that. So every birthday that comes up, I'll buy him a different instrument, and he goes, you know, what, happy birthday, what's that? It's a baritone ukulele. <laughs> oh, how do you play that? And I'm like, I don't know. You figure, figure it out before it. your next birthday. Yeah, so I've got him. I've got him a marimba. Yeah, I've got him a Japanese lap harp with 24 strings. Wow. I found it in this freaky op shop, and it's like, <laughs> what's that? It's a Japanese lap harp. How do you play it? I don't know. And he just sort of strummed it a couple of times, and then tuned it, and yeah. then started playing Japanese music on it. You're like, what the? Yeah, yeah, that's what's, pretty cool. What Talking sorcery is this? But Jap Japanese. What? What was it? A Japanese lap harp. Lap harp. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Twenty-four nice. strings. My uh, my new partner is a very very old friend of mine, and, and Paul's as well, and not a really new partner anymore. You know, we mm -hmm. just took us thirty years to get together. Um. My mother my came to her birthday party <laughs> in December, and uh, came up with a present and says, "Here you are, Jenny." She says, "You know," and you know my. My previous wife was quite abusive, you know. Mm. It was the total opposite of Jenny. We're getting there. We're but getting like, to that story. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. She hands her the present. Thank she you goes, for and, she goes, <laughs> and she goes, it's a weapon. I'm like... <laughs> Always handsy, bro. Always handsy. <laughs> and she handy. opens it, and it, it is a weapon. It's a skull-cleaving instrument. That'll be <laughs> handy, mate. <Ooh. laughs> and my mother says, sure. it's a Japanese <laughs> hoe, darling. <laughs> a Japanese hoe. And myself and my friend started snickering. And she's, well, it's not that kind of hoe. Yeah. <laughs> it's a weapon, it's a hoe. That's God actually damn. his mother's voice that yeah. he put on there. Yeah. <laughs> God bless you, Felicity, if you're watching this. Have you guys been to Japan? No. Uh, no, it's, uh, I'd, I'd always love to. Um, food. You mm. know. I feel like Japan are living in the future, eh? Their technology and shit's mm. just out the gate. So mm. when you guys were telling about... Um, the Cavern Club, I, I remember a story when I was in Japan, I found, because like they have all the tiny bars and pubs and yes. some of them, it's no joke, like it's the size of this table with, uh, with the bar being here. So like they're four, five, four people, you know, like they're so tiny and so niche that you can find all those pubs. And I remember wow. in Osaka, which was my, my favorite city to go to, um, I was watching a jazz show and then, you know, like just Googling what's up and then like the cave. And I'm like, the cave, I got to check it out, right? And it was like a, they made the same style as the Cavern Club. Her or, you said her, didn't you? Did I say her? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who are you checking out? Whose cave are you checking out? Bro bro <laughs> Broken English, brother. Part of the show. Part of the show. The cave. So 
I get there, it's the Cavern Club. <laughs> the kid, the chick with, with the, the beard and the long hair, the chick. Now, nah. and it was a, a, a tribute uh, Beatles band, but the thing was, you could join them, wow. so they knew the just like whole the real, just like thing. The real so there club. was, so there was a little, yeah. there was yeah. a little paper on on each seat, and you could write like you could tick. I still have the paper. You could tick who you wanted to be. Whoa. So like I was Ringo, right? The drama. So uh -huh. I ticked Ringo, <laughs> and I put like three, four songs, and I was like, ah, come on. You didn't say I want to be Pete Best. <laughs> <laughs> But man, they were sharp. <laughs> Not really. But they were sharp as man. Japanese musicians like oh, they got it oh, down, yeah, you know, well. like in the the vocals yeah. perfect. Because that was the thing that always amazed me with, with the Beatles, like mm. the backing vocals. Mm. What the fuck was happening there? Oh, you know, in, like, the, in the show, we were very lucky to be at Tim Armstrong and Simon Elton, you know, and oh. rest in peace, Simon. Um, two of the greatest singers in the country, and then me, and but. Simon and well, I worked with Tim for umpteen years, and we naturally harmonised together. And same with Simon, but Simon just had the voice from hell, didn't he? Yeah, he was, you know. But all three of us would, you know, it was there was never a moment that all three of us weren't singing. Some sometimes mm. with some bands, there's chemistry, and it just happens. And then some bands, you've really got to work really hard, and then sometimes it happens. Yeah, but. Um, these guys here just had had this magic just happened chemistry i like yeah. it yeah mm. see marmon strong he comes quite often to the coromando i'm pretty sure for the matarangi oh, he does. thing yeah. yeah well he used to spend a lot of time in coromandel town because that was my old uh, when i moved back from england i went back to coromandel because i grew up on the thames coast and my best mate owned the pub up there and that's a good enough reason to move anyway really nice yeah <laughs> wow. and uh, right it was a nice base to be so i wasn't in a city because i don't really care too much for cities you know yeah, 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 yeah. so you know and of course uh, my friend richard savage he was a very good operator and and he would put on these incredible gigs and, and you know we'd all just uh, we kind of had this network like you were saying with hamilton you know like we had a revolving band eh? Mm. you know mm. so who's going to suit this gig well it was basically who can do it and off we'd go. There'd be no rehearsal involved. Or, It'd yeah, just be fun. Know. Yeah. 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 And that's the thing about music, and, that, and that's why music brings people joy, and that's why people want to see bands. It's just fun. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. just fun. Yeah, yeah. You know? And that's it for us too. Like, we don't, this is the reason that I was saying with Campbell and Kristen, I don't rehearse them, which is the first thing they've, they've never, ever been in a band like that. They're ready. They're incredible musicians, so they just follow me. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually the look that I do when I follow him. <laughs> but um, but I learnt that off Tim because I never had a rehearsal in the Kiwi Bandits mm. in the ten years I played with them. <laughs> Trial by fire, and, mm, he, and yeah. Tim knows every song ever written by every single person <laughs> yeah. on the planet. Mm, yeah. Like literally, yeah, hey, you pull out this old. Oh, what's that? Ah. He'll know it. Yeah, he knows yeah. every song ever written. Wow. Well. And you know, so yeah, I know it's, it's an awful theater. thing to be in it on stage, especially if you're in a duo with them. Yeah, you know. I, yeah I, I, I'm absolutely frightened of jamming with him. <laughs> if I'm on stage and he gets up for a jam, I'll just like, oh, I'll, I'll play, I'll play the handle, I'll play at the bar, and uh, yeah, he's just, I won't know what songs he plays. I won't know them. He'll just, he'll just, oh, wing it. I think I overheard it when I was driving past the supermarket once. It was in the. Uh, oh, that'll be, that'll be Tim straight up. Yeah. He actually in the, no, he used to play in the supermarket, remember? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but there'd be like, the, oh, I'm good for the good. Things, but There'd be like, Big Fresh. Big Fresh. And there'd be cows and chickens oh. and that up on the, on the, on the, Do you remember that? Free buns. Yeah. Yes. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they had that, they had that section like way up in the air and you'd the go in veggies there. and then the right. was it the farmers or something and you had the cow that moved yep. next to the yeah, dairy yeah. yeah yeah and he'd be sitting up there <laughs> that's right i remember <laughs> that and you go to the supermarket you hear some music and it's like man i know that voice he's taking around hung over and there's like <laughs> and he's up there in a the corner and you can't you don't know where he is because it's like supermarket cows sound system so there's like a zillion speakers everywhere you can't tell where it's coming from it's <laughs> Hey, look, it's Tim. Oh, just it's above, funny, it, just was, above the pasta. I was actually <laughs> flatting with him at the time, eh? So to be like... <laughs> Man. Oh, God. He's on the pasta stage. So you both live in Hamilton at the yeah. moment? Yeah. yeah. I do. I've just moved back. So um, 
When um, was it, man? When did you get back? Um, I got back in July uh, 20, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. How did you find coming back uh, with, like, COVID and stuff? Well, coming back was a nightmare. Yeah. It was, um, you know, my marriage had broken up and I was... But then I got stuck over there with that and unfortunately Ireland's not a very good place to hang out in the middle of winter and COVID if there's no pubs and, and yeah, you know nothing's the, open to you well like. the pub is the centre of the community you know yeah. over mm-hmm. there so you know it's not like you sit in the pub all night but you go there after work you have your little catch up have your pints watch the news have the banter that's why they have like because my husband's from the UK so he's like you know go to the U- like go to the pub for a roast and I'm like mm, our pubs don't have roast <laughs> yeah, in here yeah. <laughs> oh really yeah on yeah. a Sunday well, well, you're going to have to remedy yeah, I haven't, haven't had a, a, um, a bat. <laughs> flip, 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 flip. Oh, nice work. Flip, flip, yeah, that's a, that's a bat. <laughs> How does it feel to be in in Hamilton right now with all the... <laughs> <laughs> it's a shit bat. It's a oh, yeah. the worst bat. You can make a better bat than it. I'm, I'm not even going to try, but look, everybody... Man, Those at home that can't see the bat. Man, you can do so many stuff if you want to, bro. We got time. <laughs> I was going to make a little hat. If you want, if you want to keep going, man. Like we, we got time and 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 a whole paper towels, man. Yeah, handy towels. My man. Handy there towels around. I said it's a hat, not a bat. Yeah, hat. <laughs> but hey, how how is the thing now with not being able to perform that much? And there's a lot of restrictions about what the crowd can do or not. How does it feel to be a musician right now? Terrible. It sucks, eh? Yeah, shit. Yeah, because you know, you guys, you're, like, I know. you'll be very limited going in, and then, like, what, yeah. max, is it still 100 people maximum? Yeah. Yeah. And obviously, you both are probably used to <laughs> thousands. A little, bit, a little bit more. 100's than that, a little yeah. bit too intimate. Um, for me, I was really feeling for my brothers in Ireland because, uh, you know, we were over there, and I. I my gigs over there would be, either, you know, your lovely little Irish pubs on my own or these big outdoor things or theatres and stuff, you know. Yeah. And, but all that went, you know. Yeah. And uh, these guys are the, these are the guys that make the, you know, I'd be playing with people like Hot House Flowers and Sandy Kelly who was got Johnny Cash off the drugs. Oh. He came to Strand Hill to get off drugs. Oh. You know, and stayed with Sandy and, uh, and like, um, oh God, Rory, uh, sorry, not, um, Shami O'Dowd, who was like Rory, o, Rory Gallagher's second coming and was oh. best mates with him. Um, Rob Strong, guys like that, you know, and there's yeah. some fantastic bands in Ireland and, and, and it was playing with them all and mm-hmm. none of, but this is their, their income, you know. And yeah. yeah. And then everything stops. Yeah. Just like that. And everything stops and they can't even go and sit in their own local pub and play a session. Yeah. You know? Nothing. You, you, what What is an island is they have these beautiful little old pubs and they, you'll be sitting in there and you won't even have a PA a lot of the time, you know? you just be in the corner of this thing sitting right next to the fire. Because <laughs> 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 there's always a fire going. Yeah. yeah. Our fire would never go out. I think I can only think of maybe two nights a year we wouldn't want the fire. Yeah. Oh. But you know, it was <laughs> cold. We ran out of wood. That was the <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, oh, we did it. Oh. <laughs> we were cutting the turf there, son. We were cutting the turf. No, we would. We'd cut the turf, and that's what you'd burn over there, you know. And we were lucky. You burn your dirt. The dirt, yeah. Wow. Well, it's you know, it's the precursor to coal, but it's the it's the worst job you've ever done in your life, especially if you got a bad back. Um. We cut acres of it because we had really good turf, and and uh, but it's the only fuel that keeps it warms you five times before you even put it on the fire. Oh. You know, basically you spend all summer, which is not very long. The two, <laughs> is it the two nights where you didn't have the fire on? <laughs> the summer nights, <laughs> oh, no. good old summer take, nights. You're doing a lot for uh, tourism. It'll take a bit longer than yeah. <laughs> you can't wait to go. You're there. really helping tourism in <laughs> Ireland. Yeah. Moment, <laughs> Those two nights are great, though. Yeah, fucking awesome. <laughs> but you'd actually uh, you'd cut the stuff. You had to turn it and blah 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 and put it up in ricks and blah blah blah. And it, it is. It's like blocks of of peat. Yeah. And, uh, on top of all your other jobs and your farm and all that sort of crap. And yeah. Stuff. But that would mean that you'd stay alive for winter. <laughs> and warm. Yeah. yeah. The first two years I was there were the two worst winters. The first winter was this, the first 
the worst winter we've ever had. And uh, mm. the second winter was like minus 22. It was like, mm, no, uh, no. You, you know, our house was 350 years old and we had no... Nothing. You know, the, the water. <laughs> How's the warranty on the heat pump? <laughs> no such thing as a heat pump in Ireland. <laughs> what? They haven't discovered them yet. Oh, sheesh. It's all just all they are there, but they don't believe in them, you know, because it's not the fucking fire. Get a Catholic, <laughs> get a Catholic one. Get a Catholic heat pump. And they'll sell like hotcakes over there. There you go. Yeah. Hey, there you go. You can have that one on <laughs> me, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Have you, been, have you been to Ireland, man? No. Oh, yes, I have. Yes, I have. Yes, sorry. Yeah, yeah I forgot that night. One of those summer nights. Eh? <laughs> well, I don't know if it was the summer no, night. It was but... winter because it was rainy and shitty. But um... but I went down to watch Paul yeah. play because I'd never seen Devilskin. I'd been in Ireland since... I remember you ringing me when I first got there going, I've got this band together. What should we call them? And uh, we were coming up with names over the phone. <laughs> you know, like... Really? So, that, so yeah. really? So you call him to check names for for Devil's Oh game? yeah, we were trying everything at one stage. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I wanted cool. to call the band Devil Gun because it, you know, like you had the devil horns, but you've got a gun if you do this. But if you uh, can a uh, Devil Gun, I thought that that's going to get you. Devil Gun. But I think that hand signals been used before, and no, uh, the the rest of the band just laughed at me. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> Come on, guys. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, um, it was actually yeah reading some lyrics that Jenny had written, and it was about a relationship failing and and the guy being an, an asshole basically. And so, one day he was a nice guy, <laughs> the next day he he was a prick. So he had like changed his skin, and today's got a devil skin on. You know, tomorrow it's an angel skin, mm. and that that's just the way I thought. And that's that's why <laughs> that's, that's some great whistling, man. It was. Chris, yes, I'm Roger Whitaker right there. It's going to be the best clip of our show, yeah. that's for sure. The soundtrack with the whistle. Mm. Well, the name worked. Yeah, yeah. 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 But um, yeah. Anyway, um, cut a long story short, we we played a couple of shows in Ireland. And I invited Chris along, and we had a great night. We were um, opening Sam up. Sam Shepard, but he didn't turn up, did he? That's right. And yeah. we were um, opening up for Aussie band Airborne, and they were huge <laughs> over there. So the, the place is packed. <laughs> Shall I? I'm going to tell them. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah um, let's do it. So, <laughs> so, so we, we hadn't met the band Airborne or anything. They'd, they, they were there. And, and the sound oh, I thought and, you knew that guy. No, we didn't know. <laughs> no, no, we, met him. Met. we stood there like a good little support band in a corner waiting while they sound checked forever. Yes. While, while Joel was trying to figure mm. out the blooming guitar licks to um, a Credence Clearwater revival song. I really wanted to show him, but... I was, you know, sitting in the corner. Anyway, so the world's longest sound check. We get up to play, well, sorry, to set our gear up, and they're going, no, you can't use that, you can't use that, you can't, no, no smoke machine, you can't move anything. And then one of oh, the guys... I wasn't aware of all this. Well, one of the guys <laughs> in their crew, because we had um, a Hamilton guy who's who left Hamilton years ago as our sound mixer. He used to mix Nightshade way back, Chris Morrison. That's right. And he was yeah, doing, yeah, so yeah. when we went to the UK, I caught up with him. So his regular gig, he's the front of house sound tech for The Who. Oh, yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, like, oh, yeah. 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 When I was living in England, he yeah. was doing Robbie Williams. Yeah. And that was Jeez. like, when he was like. He's done Madonna, he's done was, Metallica. Yeah. He's, he's like a sound tech from Hamilton that's just gone to the moon and back. What's his name again? Chris, Chris Morrison. Morrison. Shout oh. out. So, Chris. yeah, he's the man. So, um, so when I told him we were coming over, he goes, I'll do sound for you. And I'm like, bro, we're playing some, some shitty gigs, but some big gigs, but some tiny little pubs. He's like, I'm all right. Yeah. I remember we wheeled out. was that out. gig? Was it the Olympia? Yeah, Dublin, eh? It wasn't yeah. the Olympia, I don't think it was. Uh, but it was one of those old, nice theatres in, yeah. in, in Dublin. I mean, I mean, I did uh, Vicar Street, you know, like some of the cool, coolest theatres in the world. Because when they built all those theatres, Dublin was the second biggest yeah. City in Europe, eh? It was like, it was only after London. Everything was, over yeah, there's yeah. so old and so beautiful. It was, and we had a great night. And you know, Airborne had sold the sold the room out. And um, like, like I say, we hadn't met them or anything. But um, I think we played our set, and then we were backstage. And I get Chris backstage, and uh, he's hammered. <laughs> what? I was drinking your rider. <laughs> yeah, he's drinking our rider. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and uh, the the stage manager for Airborne comes in and he goes, "Hey, the guys thought your show was really good. They'd like to meet you guys. Do you want to meet them?" And it's like, "Oh wow, this is awesome! Yeah, sure, yeah." Because they're massive in Ireland. They're, they're, yeah. well, they're massive to us. Everywhere. It's Airborne. Yeah. You know, they're huge. 
And so um, he didn't have a shirt on, eh? He yeah. still was all sweating. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so we get back, we get back <laughs> and Chris comes along as well. And I'm thinking, oh, should I leave him in our room because he's a bit pissed? And, oh no, well come along, come along. Anyway, so so Joel, the singer from Airborne, is this tiny little man. He's got this huge voice, but he's a skinny little waif of a thing, you know. Fucking great entertainer, right? Yeah, he's, he's amazing, yeah. so good. And 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 oh, good day, mate. And he's sitting down. And I goes, oh, I'm Paul, and he goes, yeah, I'm Joel, and I says, oh, I know, man, hey, great show, you know, thanks so much for having us on the tour, and um, and then, yeah, yeah sweet, sweet, uh, I go to shake the next guy's hand, and Chris comes along and goes, oh, yeah, mate, yeah, yeah, Joel. No, you introduced him to me, said, this is my mate, Chris. This is my mate, Chris, that's right. And Chris yeah, yeah. Goes, yeah, I'm a singer too, mate. Hail Satan! <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't said, think it was. What, what was it? Um, it was Hail Satan, bro. I, I said to him. <laughs> Hail Satan, bro. I remember. But then I, it was Hail Satan. But oh, then I said to him, the whole room just, <laughs> you, even Satan was a bit like, <laughs> what the hell? But you remember he said to me, uh, I, 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 I'm trying to be nice. I'm going, he oh, was man. shaking his hand and you wouldn't you, you got a going. great voice, bro. But you know fucking Chris Bailey. <laughs> I thought he would ask, hey, let the guys use the fucking smoke machine, bro. What the fuck? Uh, well, here's the thing about that. So this is where Chris Morrison comes into So before this happened, and we're at the sound check, and, and they're saying, no, you can't move your gear, you can't move this, you can't move that. And then one of the crew, one of their crew, their stage manager, notices Chris, and he goes, hey, you, Chris, did you work with The Who? And then Chris goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's real soft spoken. Yeah, yeah, man, that was me. And, I, and this guy goes, oh man, you, I was with this other band, and and you looked after us, and you, you, wow, we toured with the Who, and you guys really looked after us. You're amazing. You're the Kiwi guy, eh? Chris says, yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah. And he goes, this whole band's Kiwis. And next minute, oh, anything you guys need, oh. <laughs> because Joel the singer, because he does a thing on stage where he, where he necks like fifteen beers and smashes them on his forehead, and yeah, you yeah. know, just <laughs> tips beer all over himself and gets half naked and goes crazy. But he's got the see, stupid I told you, I tell you, it's no Chris Bailey. No, he's no Chris Bailey. <laughs> but he's got this. He's trying to. Eh? He's, he's got this enormous to... lump of wood, half naked. Yeah. and it's like a surfboard that's got holes cut in it for his freaking beers and stuff, and. That has to have a, a big place on stage. And I have to put my amp, my Marshall stack, over there. And I'm using two quads and two heads, and I'm, like, pushed into this corner. It's, like, really dumb. Imagine Can we just move wood? that? <laughs> nah, you're not moving his beer thing. Nah, nah, no, nah, it's not your that, mate. Next minute, oh, oh, that's Chris Morrison from The Who. These guys can have anything they want. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow. Well, oh, yeah. You hey, you can have the smoke machine. You want the smoke machine? We're like, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Smoke machine. It's all about who you know. Yeah, eh? who you oh, know, jeez. Yeah. But then, hell Satan! Well, Satan! <laughs> and he's shaking his hand and like uncomfortably <laughs> long and we're like <laughs> 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 you got a great voice bro you know Chris Bailey <laughs> he's a little dude and you're crushing him and he's like <laughs> he's like obviously wincing he's a guitarist too. I'm like bro bro let him go let him go fuck it was hilarious <laughs> where did you end up that, that was the end uh, of your well, marriage yeah we, we I do remember <laughs> my last memory that night is because unfortunately <laughs> I, my wife at the time wasn't feeling too well <laughs> After she was not a metal fan anyway, but she hung out because she'd met Paul um, in New Zealand. Gemini party, yeah, and um, you know, so it was a nice catch up. That was just pretty much the start of divorce proceedings, though, wasn't it? Oh no, that was coming well. Oh before, yeah, okay. Oh. oh, I don't feel so bad now. <laughs> Thank God. But it was all on you anyway, bro. You just stole the show that night. But that I played awesome. a blind out because uh, <laughs> as we left the venue. You know, I remember coming down the back stairs of this fucking thing. I where the fuck am I? Was in the concrete jungle. We're all I was too. And it's like double. Yeah, yeah. it's just <laughs> double. <I've never laughs> been fuck. Oh no, this is still in the building. And oh. finally found my way out the back door. And like right there, we're going to a pub. Where are we going to go? I said, oh, where did we? I think I took you to Wheelands or something. Oh. Eh? Which is like a class, one of the greatest Irish. Well, the place where you play. I mean, I I did a gig there with Harry Lyon and Don McGlashan. When I first arrived, eh, I got a phone call one afternoon. It's Harry going, what are you doing this afternoon? Wow. <sighs> feel like coming down and I've got my first ever solo show. I'm feeling a bit fucking nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Harry Lyon's well, awesome. We yeah, just... You've got to give me a bit more notice. <laughs> and he goes, well, we and, just and he goes but I'm, I'm, I'm doing support for Don McGlashan. Oh, wow. All right. 
Oh yeah. Okay. okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll come. I'll come. I'll come. I'll come. I can fit it in. You got a smoke machine? <laughs> what, 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 yeah. Yeah. Smoke yeah. Machine. yeah. Yeah. So man, of all these these rock stars, legends that you you have played with and and, and toured with, he's the craziest motherfucker. Oh, definitely. From what yeah. I can tell. Yeah. My yeah. man. Do you can't say that about me. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, come on. All right, story no. for a story. Go on then. Huh? <laughs> story for a story. He told you you're crazy one. Oh, yeah. 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 I actually haven't been crazy yet. I'm hoping tonight's going to be the oh. night. Fitiana. Uh, Fitiana is going to give it all. I just don't know if I've got any stories about you. No, no. No, I don't think you've got any stories about <laughs> me either. Yeah, I have, but... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind. Yeah, you can <laughs> <laughs> So, um, Chris used to play gigs naked. Did you know that? He like, used to play acoustic solo gigs and take his clothes off during the night. Not even Chili Pepper style with the sock. No, 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 no. It'll no, be no, full no. on and... Uh, Actually, I think that's the last time we ever played at Smitty's because I was... <laughs> yeah! <laughs> fuck yeah! Is that the last time they've asked you back or...? No, this no. is yeah, a long time ago, but oh, I yeah. had a duo with Graham Brazier and um, <laughs> I was telling Paul this afternoon, it was quite funny, we, we were halfway out of Auckland and it's five o'clock traffic and it had taken us about 13,000 hours to get to the top of the dom- bomb base <laughs> and Braz goes, yeah, he's got a box of Heineken between his feet but he goes fuck we have to go back like, why we can't go back man it's like one way traffic <laughs> you know I forgot my methadone oh, oh. fuck <laughs> you gotta go back maybe you should no, get, we you can't go back no. we can't go back because we're never gonna make it up <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and, uh, I'm going uh, driving oh that's not good yeah <laughs> <laughs> you guys, it's all right. We'll drink our way through it. Yeah. Yeesh, so we did and for you about did. four days. Yeah. Wow. You got the <laughs> memories from from those four days? Some of it? Yeah. <laughs> Most of it. <laughs> Most of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a. He, he actually gave me his 12 string that he wrote Bull, Billy Bowl on. Oh, oh, really? I put them back in. Wow. That's cool, man. Yeah. And, and look like you have to sign it and, and just grab my. Swiss Army knife and sweet. <laughs> Man, you guys, you guys, you guys have played with like amazing musicians and you know all these these big names, and you guys are big names as well. Like, do you still feel like when you go to a place and you see someone that you really appreciate, do you feel that thing of like, oh, oh, it's kind of like, oh yeah, you oh, know, no, 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 no. Mate, mate, show, we're so. all we're all good, we're all. I think you never stop being a fanboy, you no, know, like absolutely. You know, at 57, I'll still go to any concert I go to, and I'll be at the front trying to grab a guitar pick. Yeah. And if I don't get one, yeah, I'll be stamping on people's Boom. hands. Yeah. I want that fucking yeah. yeah. sick, man. And I want to fight for it. Yeah. Don't give it to me. Let me yeah, fight yeah, yeah, for yeah. it. Dude, yeah. like, I want to earn it. I've got everyone from Zach Wild to Glenn Campbell, you know. Ah, oh, motherfucker, stop it. And I, 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 I you love got a Glenn Campbell pick. I have. No way. Yes. Ah. Went and saw him play in Rotorua, and it was amazing. It was amazing. He was 72. Was, I think it was one of his last tours. Wow. And he I just love that. Uh, you said insane. Zach Wilder and Glenn Campbell in the same <sighs> sentence, and I go, have you got a Glenn Campbell person? <laughs> 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 and Zach Wilder was like my hero, you know. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man, you know, but yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I think we like that. We love music. So if you're in, in the game for this long, it's because you're passionate. Yeah. And that passion doesn't go away. And, and you can hear a new band. It doesn't matter who the hell it is. You hear a piece of music and it just starts that Absolutely, fire all yeah. over again, you know. And That's the coolest it. thing about playing, and, and, and this one thing with Devil Skin, is I love doing the all ages shows because you see these little kids up the front and you see the lights come on in their eyes and they're like, I'm going to be a musician. Yep. And you see that happen, and it's like, man, it's the coolest feeling ever. That's it. It really is. Yeah, there, what, what's your like? What's your guys' biggest advice for young people wanting to get into music? Um, I, I, to be honest with you, Impression. since I've come Impression. back, yeah, and New Zealand's always had that guidance, and I think it's really similar to Ireland as well. You know, like um, there is support. Yeah, yeah, there's huge support for the arts, but there's no support for the artists. Unfortunately, mm, yeah. Yeah. See, yeah. the schools are great you because know. they have the whole uh, you know rock quest, smoke, incredible. smoke yeah. smoke free rock quest. Well, well uh, mm. unfortunately, that's, <laughs> that's another story. <laughs> 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 yeah. 
Do it, man. Do it. Okay, so yeah, the, okay. Paul's like the first ever rock quest. I think was in about no. Oh. Yeah, but, <laughs> um, but so that's when I first saw Valhalla. But they were called Septic Death because I was at St Paul's at the time. I was like fourteen, and we went down and we played and. Septic Death played. Septic Death used to do gigs with Scrotal Mange. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. What I remember fuck? Scrotal Mange. Mange. Scrotal Mange. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> but I saw this band and I went, man, these guys are mad, eh? They? This guy, Andrew Mills, that we were gigging with. And, but, you know, we uh, came back and uh, the next year my parents had moved to Hamilton, so I went to Hillcrest High. And there's the guys out of Septic Death, Gareth. Glenn. Oh no, Gareth wasn't even in. It was Billy and Glenn and James, you know. And so I joined the band, and um, fuck, what a cool band! Like I still think it was the, one of the best bands I've definitely the best original band I've ever played with. You know, like this guy James was, and a naturally talented songwriter. And you were how old? Sixteen. Shit. Jeez, that's cool. But we did really well, eh? You know, and. Uh, but we were just kids, being, you know, but we, it was fucking great and people picked up on us and we were doing some quite big shows and we we made it through to the grand finals of the Rock West that year. So mm-hmm. we went down to Christchurch and uh, had a fucking good old party and Cora won it that year. And uh, wow. who else was there? Jason Kerrison was there. Um, Bick Runger. Bick Runger that same year and another couple of, you know, like, but... Um, and then the next year we went down and everyone was tipped for us to win it. Oh. Yeah. You know, they had yeah. it right and found the theatre. Yeah. Tore out all the seats. <laughs> 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 and we went down to Christchurch and uh, unfortunately we uh, went out the back with uh, Robbie Ruckety and uh, Stephanie to... Oh, yeah, to... Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Show me your uh, pronunciation there. <laughs> I, I can't remember her name, but yeah, Stephanie, yeah. yeah. And had a joint. Beef? Yes, it was a <laughs> lovely cut of beef. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, was, that was the first year that Smoke Free had taken over it, and, and, and the smoking Smoke Free police was came no. out. Oh, there's waiting uh, change for Smoke Free. Having a, we're having a hooner out there with the, with, with the people that are actually... <laughs> The MCs. The now we know. Yeah. Now so we know. Smoke Free Rock Quest wasn't so smoke they, free. So they let us play, <laughs> but we were instantly disqualified. Oh, uh, yes. no. <laughs> so wait, I'm going to go get you another beer, but one, I'll leave you with a question. So you guys said that there's a good incentive for like the, the kids in school, but not much for the artists. I think who, who should we go after then? Is it is it like the venues or is it the, the people's appreciation? Where, where, where's the missing link? Well, there? don't go after the venues because I'm in hospitality and uh, like we've the venues are struggling. Yeah, yeah, venues are struggling. You know, like I'm helping run a, a venue in Hamilton, Billy Mulligan's. It used to be Diggers, you know, and we've got oh yeah, an yeah. incredible sound system in there and everything too, and it's a great room and. Uh, but like, because um, they do. I used to go and do karaoke night with them. Not that I can sing, just enjoyed a good old karaoke night there. <laughs> oh yeah, oh, the staff run it now, which yeah. is quite funny because I'm that's too frightened to ever do karaoke. I've never done it. Oh really? I did it there. Uh, when and, w- and while we're live on air, I've never played PlayStation either, folks. Oh yeah, no, me either. Just saying. No games. I did karaoke there. I'm old there, school. Though. I've got knuckle bones. <laughs> Guess what I say? Game. Yeah. I bought my kids knuckle bones. <laughs> did you? Yeah, I awesome. did. They bought them some for Christmas. Your man's true way to heart. I've just, I just been out to see Andrew Fagan and I was on a bit of a high <laughs> and I thought I'd sing Jen the Love Song. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> some tool. Uh, but we were talking before when we were, we were having a ciggy and we were saying like, it's a shame how in this fucking crazy pandemic times... People don't value the artists, the, the, the yeah. essential workers, you know, because everybody goes for the book, for the music, for the fucking Netflix or, or the movie. But like, mm. there's a little bit of that. What about the appreciation? What about keeping those guys, you know, employed? And, and, and I, uh, everyone's got to eat, right? I, I, I still think that in New Zealand, people don't believe in music as a, a, as a legitimate job. Yeah, you know, job, like, yeah. Whereas no. in Ireland, what I was saying yeah. to you before, it's like, if you're a musician in Ireland, 
and you're any good. You're I mean, a I, I was quite lucky because I played the 12 string and they no one in Ireland plays 12 <laughs> strings, thank God. Yeah. Niche, you got the niche, found the but, niche. Um, but <laughs> you're valued as a really important member of the community over there if you're if you're a musician, whereas in New Zealand it's like, oh. Yeah. Play wagon wheel. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know it, you know it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We had um, Annie on a couple of weeks ago, didn't we? We had Annie on, Annie Wong, and she said Annie that... Annie Gong. Annie Gong, yeah. She said that musicians in New Zealand were, what would she describe it as? Ex- an expensive hobby? Expensive hobby. Yeah. 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 Is it? Yeah. So these ladies... Goes, it goes and shifts and wins, doesn't it, it bro? Um, you know, it's sometimes you actually... I mean, I had a really wonderful 10 years back in New Zealand, you know, between living overseas where... I got to live in Coromandel in my house and tour all over the country and, and get paid really, really good money all the time. But it's not there now. You yeah. get paid less than 10 years ago. 20 yeah. years ago. Oh, fuck. Far, huh? mm. You know, and I'm talking like uh, talking, sorry, monetary value, which that doesn't go up and it never has, you know. like Yeah. You know, and it's but, uh, but that's because the 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 and hospitality, which is my other what I do, you know, it's like the margins are like, yeah. you know, so it's it's a nightmare. You can't win either way. The, the guys need to get these venues open to get the music out there, and they have to keep putting up the price of beer and food and stuff like that, yeah. you know, and uh, you know, a lot of it, it's taxes. It all sounds you know? a bit dire, and and it it really is kind of for music at the moment, but. <clears throat> I'm hoping that you know uh, after every uh, after every major plague the world's had, there's been a renaissance. Yes. So I'm yeah, hoping that yeah, yeah, that yeah. people are going to value music a little bit more. I mean, everyone's going through such a hard time with employment and and, and health and whatever and the whole COVID bullshit. Well, the funny thing about employment is that it's never been higher in New Zealand. Whose figures, bro? Mm. I don't know. But Paul, man, but, but sorry. You oh, no, 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 sorry. No, no, I was just wondering because, like, not playing devil's advocate, but, like, some people at home might be thinking, fuck, the bro plays a devil's skin, and, and he's talking about appreciation. Like, so can you explain to us how this affects everyone, even the big names? Like, people take it oh, for yeah. granted? Oh, okay, so so we, um, a few years ago, we approached American band Hailstorm, and they played once in New Zealand. They, they couldn't sell out the power station. They weren't getting any airplay. Really? Yeah, but they, yeah, I know they're huge everywhere else in the world. Yeah, but New Zealand hadn't discovered them yet, and um, we brought them over here for a tour, and, and uh, they opened for us. And then <laughs> and I know, I know, I know, I know then we went to Australia. I know, <laughs> then we went to Australia, and and we opened for them, and then we had such a good time. They're so lo- such lovely people, really, really lovely people. They invited us for a European tour, so we did like twenty two countries oh. around Europe with them, Dang. and. You know their their crew. They they hailstorm are one of the hardest working bands ever ever like that I've ever come across. They do something like um, two hundred and ninety gigs a year. Yeah. Like they just tour and tour, and tour and tour and tour and tour, and they hardly ever cancel gigs, and and they're just on the whole time. And we got to tour with them, but they've got like a crew of eighteen that go with them. And those people are like family. They're all family. They all just love each other. You know, the drum tech is the stage manager, and he's, you know, they're just everyone's connected so well. Yeah. And and it's a big touring. It's a, it's their jobs. It's all their jobs. And then when just it all like stopped that. over there, mm-hmm. they they you know the band. No one could play. No one could do gigs. So the band went out and and made all these t-shirts to sell through their um, social media outlets and that to their fans to support their crew. And it was, um, they had a whole range of merch and all the money went straight to their crew. You know, mm. so their, their crew are amazing. Um, mm. One of the, they had two guitar techs and um, one of them was um, uh, Dickie Betts from the Allman Brothers guitar oh, tech. Oh, oh, really? Yeah. What? For like 20 <laughs> years, bro. Holy God. And he, he goes, oh, bro, your bass is looking a bit rough. Can I give it a birthday? And I'm like, yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but you're just lovely, lovely people, and you know there's a whole industry behind the the. You see the the four people or five people on stage, but there's a massive industry mm. behind them, and everyone's like family, and everyone works so freaking hard, and they've all been just everything stopped for them, and it's it's heartbreaking to see that. 
Um, luckily, in the state, in the, uh, the states, it's all picked up again, and they can yep. they can tour yeah. once Festivals again. Festivals, and but yeah. that's what I saw in, in Ireland as well, where the arts is such a a huge part of the culture and why yeah. people go to Ireland. And, and I mean, they get something like oh, yeah, man, oh, three three thousand. <laughs> you know, like you know. <laughs> A stupid amount of visitors a year. People want to go to Ireland and they want to go to the the west coast of Ireland, to the Wild Atlantic Way, and blah blah blah. And, and uh, to experience the pubs and the music and the and the music is it's seconds and none. Man, it's incredible. These guys, eh? they're just. I mean, I'd love to take you there. You would just like. Oh, like, take us too, like, man. Uh, please do. <laughs> I was hoping that time you were in Dublin. That, I, think there was a thing, I think there was a thing that you might have had a couple of days off and you couldn't actually, you yeah. had to change it. But yeah. like, but when you stop a way of life like that, you know, yeah. and, but yeah, you've got to think yeah, about yeah. the guys Cause doing, it's, yeah. doing this, this, you're running the theatre, doing the Hiring the lights like, out, you know, hiring the, the sound mm. gear, you know, the music yeah, shops, yeah, yeah. everything. It's just such a big... Industry and, yeah. and and when it all stopped and there was mm. the and then the venues so eh? like yeah because they're still having to pay their rent on the yeah you know you get people saying no I can't go to a couple of concerts it's like no well, I can't perform these the con- thing is I can't yeah perform when, them. once once times get tough and everyone has to oh shit I don't have any money this week it's entertainment you cut back on first yeah. it's yeah. not your food or your electricity no. bill mm-hmm. and your restaurants kids, as well yeah. you know mm-hmm. it's, yeah. it's like, like it's the luxury things. And you and make your own sandwich instead of buying it at yeah. the cafe, don't you? Yeah. Get and from drink. eating out as a family, you're like, no. well, I'll cook it at home. Yeah. Yeah. Here we go, here's some crust and, <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it's, 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 it's pretty expensive to go out for a night drinking to see a band. It's not cheap. Yeah. yeah. You know, well, we like, used to be out every night, like, it was cheap then. For fucking years, mate. We'd, we'd, we'd well, we didn't it. pay for anything. We did. Two shillings. <laughs> <laughs> we'd two we never sh- spent a fucking cent. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so it was quite cheap. But now it's like, uh, you go out to do a gig and, and they're going, you can have three beers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't yeah. tell me about like your... now <laughs> or the whole night? Oh, no, I'm yeah. expecting Smithers to be... Uh, <laughs> like three at once. Okay. Yeah. A little bit more accommodating because yeah. we are in the mighty Coromandel and, position. And you yeah. can appreciate it because the venues are doing it tough, mm. you know, and yeah. the price of everything's gone up. And mm. now with petrol going up so dramatically, you can only expect everything's going to get tougher mm. from now on mm-hmm. because like, everything uh, relies on freaking transport. It's like you yeah. today, eh? It's like sent me a text last night going... I didn't know there'd been a big jump. I thought three dollars. I think you fucking end it there. Yeah, yeah. take it. It's like, oh, I should have guessed up tonight. <laughs> get the <laughs> flea, get the flea stores car. Eh? The, the, <laughs> the one time all year I actually needed a full tank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm going, don't look at me because my last two nights gigs have been cancelled because of COVID. Right? <laughs> <You're> <laughs> like, <laughs> so, so you guys, you guys were saying. You you did hospitality. You do hospitality still? I you're do. Still I, 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 yeah, uh, but I'm not. Uh, I'm trying to get out of it because I've yeah. got a, a broken back. So, um, it's how did that happen, man? Uh, and the most did amazing way good for me because uh, <laughs> no, well, absolutely. But because, uh, <laughs> I I remember one, remembers. Night, one night in Dublin, you I, see. Um. I put my back through the mill. I did actually sleep in the wardrobe that night. Apparently, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> But um, Take yeah, no, just so being a, I was doing something in farm, the water. So I was doing so and, and farming the over there is not machinery. No, and all that. it's like lifting fucking rocks and mm. fucking making turf and it's. it's <laughs> I'm not going to talk to you, Yeah, I can't but, get uh, over how much dirt is such a big part of life <laughs> in Ireland. Oh, you don't want to fucking get me started on the dirt. <laughs> okay, sorry, I'll. Sorry. But um, I was working in. This place at the Strand Bar in Strand Hill, big shout out. Voted second best Irish bar in the world. Whoa. Wow. Yeah. Flex. Um, it's it's an incredible place. And that was my residency over there for the whole time I lived there. And um, Is it on a par with Coromandel Township? No, it's way better, bro. It's really? Fucking Dude. Insane. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Second best Irish bar in the world. You've got to be doing pretty well to get to that. That's for sure. I've never had a Guinness in Coromandel, I have to, I have to admit. No, in the world. 
<laughs> and it happens to be an <laughs> island, you know. It's not in yeah. Boston or something. Like that. <laughs> Are you talking about the world or all four corners of the globe? I'm talking all four corners of the globe. Globes have no corners. Uh, Just you. saying. Is the, is the, is That's the, because they're flat. <laughs> yeah, yes, I was about to say that. Because it's flat. Boom. Oh, okay. Here we go. It's the midnight show. Now yeah. the talk's the getting interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Alderton, are you out there? <laughs> well, we know you're out there, but. <laughs> Bo, and meanwhile, radio stations, bro. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, I had this little radio show called The Axe Attack, which I started in 1987 on um, Contact Radio, the student radio station in Hamilton at the time. And I was with them for six years, and for three years I won Best Specialist Show for the, for the Axe Attack Heavy Metal Show. And then um, about 92, I think it was, when, when The Rock first started up in Hamilton, yeah. I went in begging for a job, and they went, we'll even give you 30 bucks a week. And I'm like, no way! <laughs> Oh, big time, big time. So I was, just, I was just <laughs> thirty bucks a week. Yeah, I was a radio personality. And I had is that what Grunter was giving you? Is it thirty bucks a week to do the exit tech? Are you fucking joking me? No, no. insane. So yeah, um, but it's when it's a passion, it's a passion, and like thirty bucks is better than me paying thirty bucks, you know. Which I would do to do that show, to, to bring music to people and, and, and play new metal releases and, and promote heavy metal. I just had an idea. I, th- I know someone who's going to sponsor you for beer. Cool. There you go. It's my mate Lee Hart. Do you know him, the comedian? <laughs> Lee Hart? No. Yeah. I should know. Why is it would he come, come here for a trip there? to the Coromandel? Oh, yeah, I'm sure he would. Man, but, can, um, do you mind just putting the cell phone on the on, on the floor because it picks up on the, the mic? Thanks, my man. We had okay. sell sausages, doesn't he? It's also a brewery. Hey, what, what is, isn't that him on TV? He's, he's, got, he's got a brewery or something? What, what's what's the... Yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah. Walker Changi, mate. This is now the Walker Changi broadcast coming to you live from Footyanger. We're going to get mm. in touch with the bro then. That would be cool. Sweet. What up, is Ellie? Nice. nice. Just so you know, Chris... It's like the magic key to get anywhere. Yes. I'm a friend of Chris Bailey's. Let me in. Yeah. All right. Come, come on. Okay, yeah, yeah. Here's the, here's the magic key to our strip club, sir. Yeah. Tell, well, you're telling me about uh, your mate at the Whiskey Go Go. Oh, yeah. Chris, would you would you call Paul and, and suggest some songs to play in his show? Like, would it be a, like a collective or you, were you always in charge of, of the playlist yeah, and your, stuff? What's yeah. Your, what's your guys' favorite song that each other sing? Ooh, we're going everywhere well, yeah. and I love this shit. Okay, well, uh, when, when I'm playing with Chris, I love when he plays the Neil Diamond stuff uh, because I think he sings it amazingly and um, and uh, yeah, just it's just that familiarity and being old school and hearing those lovely tunes is comforting, you know. But he sings it really, really well, so, yeah, I have to say the Neil Diamond stuff that that. Uh, that's a bugger. I can't <laughs> <remember>. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember any of it. <laughs> well, I'm going to be disappointed I haven't done tonight. Any Neil Diamond stuff for years, but uh, yeah. I think uh, I am Satan. Eh? I yeah. am Satan. Yeah, it was a great song. I <laughs> Paul Gilbert, man from Mr. Yeah, Big. Paul yeah, Paul Gilbert. Yeah. yeah. Do you know the song? Mr. Big. I know Mr. Big. Well, so. Paul Gilbert's got this amazing solo career, and he's done like thirty or forty albums. He's got this guy that plays the bass one too. What's his name? I don't know. But he's wicked. But they did this uh, gig in the Tokyo Hard Rock Cafe. He's huge in Japan. <laughs> he's huge in Japan. But he's got the song called "I Am Satan," and and it's like a, <laughs> it sounds like a Beatles song. <laughs> it sounds. Hey Jenny. Hey Judy. Judy. Yeah, Judy. Judy. Yeah. Judy. Yeah. Judy. Judy. Yeah. Judy. Yeah. Judy. Yeah. You remember well, how, how we met? met? I know you'll never forget. Cause you love me, blah blah, and it goes on. But I am Satan. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. I rule darkness and call up the night. Yeah. And it sounds like the Beatles song, but the lyrics are just mental. It's, yeah. <laughs> but the funniest thing is, he's in the Hard Rock Cafe in in Tokyo, yeah. and uh, all the Japanese going, "I am Satan." <laughs> <laughs> T-shirts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what about oh, I am Satan T-shirts? That would be uh, cool, eh? Wow. Good merch. Now we're getting started. Yes. Oh, <laughs> merch. But what about for the radio show? Would you get your bros 
calling you and suggesting bands or, or, or saying, man, that would be a good... Yeah? Yeah. Was that a... Yeah. Yeah, and it was great. And I'd get local bands sending in music all the time. You know, we just done recording. And I loved it. I played no less than 30% Kiwi music. On that's that's, no, that's how so I made Paul in the first place. So and it wasn't hard. It wasn't there, was hard. A, there was kind of law in New Zealand, mm. isn't it? Like no, there, there was, no. There was before. No. Never has been. I heard something that like no. the, the, the broadcasting no. or something no. would need a no. percentage. No. Bullshit. They worked. That they brought that to Parliament and tried to implement it, and the government voted it down. Uh, and, then, and then they said, "Oh no, we'll just do a deal with the with the major radio stations, and they'll have a self-imposed quota uh, of twelve percent. Twelve percent. Self-imposed, uh, but there's no regulated." Regulatory body watching it to make sure that they did that, or, yeah. and they could get away with twelve percent by by playing the same half a dozen Dave Dobbin songs or Crowded House songs. Yeah. Oh. Going week, to you know? the people so, that actually so getting this stuff actually, from all over the world. It didn't too. actually yeah. mean that they were going to play more New Zealand music, which yeah. sucks because if they brought in the thirty percent thing, then bam, you know, it would have been so Is good. Does that favorite. not happen? Fuck yeah, no, no. That's the one great thing about yeah. Ireland. I mean, fifty percent at least of what you hear on the radio. Even if it's shite, it's Irish music. Irish music. You know? Mm. You never hear any U2. Thank God for that. <laughs> I'm not new to Ireland. They fucking hate Mono Way. You've just done a lot for tourism in Ireland, bro. I'm, like, yeah. I'm signing up. I'm only telling them the truth. I'm coming. I'm coming. <laughs> I want to come. Have you guys crossed paths? With the U2 and any of the tours around Europe? No, no, no. no. I met Van Morrison though. I did something pro. Oh. I did something pro bono once, but that's as close <laughs> as I got to him. Pro bono. <laughs> bro bono. <laughs> Man, no, I, I I got Van Morrison drunk. He'd been off the. Uh, he'd been on the wagon for about fifteen years and. <laughs> then you bring him back to the game. You, yeah. you. I fucked him up. Yeah. <laughs> that ruined his career. You know that, eh, Chris? Well, that, that, that was about 1999 or something like that. But, yeah. yeah. But I blame the power cut. Like, he yeah. Was, yeah. But, yeah, he hadn't had a drink in many years and he turned up at 2 o'clock in the morning in this bit of a storm and we're at the north arse end of Wales. And... Uh, We'd gone for like a surfing holiday, but because this big storm was coming <laughs> in, but it was like, Wales. it was Holy a bigger shit. storm than we thought. So we stayed at our, took our bartender, his grandmother owned a pub and and they all spoke Welsh, you know, so it was quite difficult. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, bet. Shit. I love it. But they loved us because we could drink and uh, why did you drink with Van Morrison? What was the, the yeah, experience? Uh, what, what was well, the thing? I'll tell you what happened. Did um, he have a hat? Did he have his hat on? No. Shit, um, really? What <laughs> happened was uh, we're, we're drunk in this bar and it was two o'clock in the morning in this tiny little village in the, in the you know, up by Anglesey. And uh, the storm got really severe and all the power had gone out so we were sitting there playing away. And there's a bang, bang, bang on the door. But it had been quite a mad night by the stage. Because they're going, yeah, we know it's going to Someone be. Someone goes, yeah. did you leave your van at the door? <laughs> 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 there's a bang, bang, bang on the door. And I'm going, what the hell is going to happen now? It was now? not Bono, was it? <laughs> no, well, it wasn't, thank fuck. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fucking Van Morrison and his mate. Because he had a pad up on, you know, in the hills there. And he's recluse. And, and he came and he... With the harps and that, and uh, wow, it was the biggest fucking drink though. And you know, I woke up the next day and I come in about like ten thirty, going, Ugh, "Can't face breakfast." <laughs> and I, oh, there's my gear. Oh shit, I was playing it. Oh, oh shit, there's my van. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh shit, there's a bunch of harmonicas sitting there. I go, who the fuck's harmonicas are those? Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> was he still there? Was he passed out or something? Or did he make it home? He was behind the bar. Oh, well. He was behind the bar with his boots poking out. He found his way in. <laughs> Snoring in a big fat like, thing and I had to try and wake him up. Dude, that's awesome. That's a that's great a story, man. Cool story. 
What? What? <laughs> How's that a good story? I'm the one that made yeah. Van Morrison fall off the wagon. Well, yeah. And, and the <laughs> other thing is, Van Morrison doesn't remember Chris at all. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he remembers waking up anyway. <laughs> Paul, do you have a story of partying with, 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 an, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Come on, one. How um, long have you got? You got a few, but come on. Okay, so um, <coughs> it was a good one. Pantera were playing in Auckland. Ooh, and um, started well. The axe attack was all over it, so I had an interview with I had Vinnie and Dimebag turn up to the Rock Studios in Auckland. What year was that? <sighs> Reinventing the Steel Tour. Yeah. They came into this little pub on K Road with Jen and Floss and all that and yeah. just played pool with them. Yeah. Jen's got all the photos. Bean bar, I was there. Yeah. Oh, for your fun. Yeah, bro. I was oh, DJing. The the, I used to, I used to be, um, DJ a metal night at, on Thursday nights in Auckland at this place called the Bean Bar. And the band were in town the night before to play the show on the Friday. And so I did the interview and they went, what are you guys doing later? Because I'm like playing metal at this little sleazy little bar with a pool table. And they're like, that's us, man. And they all turned <laughs> up. They're like Pantera and their crew all turned up. And um, yeah, it was like, I'm on the phone going... Uh, you're not going to believe who's in the bar, bro. I know it's 11 o'clock, but you better get out of bed and come down here. And it's like, yeah, we had a really cool night. And the nicest guys you can meet, so nice. Had time for photos and, and signatures for everyone and just yeah. enjoyed being amongst like-minded souls who love the music, you know? What's the name cool. of the guitar player? Got shot to... Dimebag. Oh, Dimebag, yeah, yeah, man. It's the sweetest dude. Nice I was lucky enough, to, like, there's four different occasions I got to go out and, and have a beer with him and hang out with him and, and watch him play and, yeah. It's Vinny, uh, Vinny Colaiuta, right? Uh, no, 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 the, the drummer. Um, Vinny Paul. Vinny Paul, yeah. It's Dimebag's brother. Yeah, yeah so he's good passed man. away he, as well. oh, Amazing. Lovely guy, lovely, Vinny sweet Paul. dude. But he, right. he passed away two years ago now too, so... That's right. Eh? And the same That's bar, right. um, Fear, sure. Fear Factory were playing in Auckland, and uh, the Exotec was involved with that. And um, you end up with um, Dino Kazar as the guitarist from from the Fear Factory down at down at the Bean Bar, and we're on it. And then something happened outside, and there's a bit of biffo. And then <laughs> Dino wanted to get involved, and all of a sudden, all us members were like, Dude, we have to pr protect our fat Mexican friend from harm because he's the guitarist from Fear Factory, God. You know, they're like, oh, just the yeah, crazy That's actually times. funny. That's uh, another funny thing from our past is that I was uh, I was going to play at Dixon Nacy's party. What? Hello. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you rang me as I'm walking down the hill and I'd be playing with Lee Hart. We'd, we had this gig that we, you know, idiots. We were the worst fucking band in history. <laughs> and, and I'm walking down and you rang me and you go, Hello, listener. You've won the uh, entire Fair Factory back catalogue. Oh. Free tickets. VIP meet and greet, blah, blah, blah. And I go, ah, oh, stop. Can't fuck me. <laughs> You're on the radio, mate. It's like, uh, uh. I can't fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> and unfortunately, they had to cancel because... Uh, your Don't, put Don't put him on the radio. Don't put him on the radio. Well, in the podcast, it's fine. You can say whatever you want, yeah. man. I've been on the radio a lot, but uh, it's never worked well for me. <laughs> man, what about... Um, uh, Brazilian bands, Sepultura or oh, well, no, big so Sepultura. Sep the Arise album, Sepultura, was one of the mainstay albums of my life. It's still in my top ten. Um, that's what fucking yeah. changed everyone's lives, man. Well, it didn't. We had Injustice no, well, for All when <laughs> in Valhalla, and we, we were yeah. kids then, you know, and we're going. Bleh. But just the sound, eh? Like, and we'd lost it. We, we, we'd learnt it all, and then uh, we and it, camped out. Everyone was like. Just camping out in Brazil, uh, you dark horse. When did you come from? <laughs> yeah, but what, we, uh, what? How did you come up with this? This is the best metal ever. Yeah, and it was. Yeah, it yeah. was. Yeah, Good stuff. Eh? Um, still my favorite metal album of all time. Really. Which one? Roots. Uh, Arise. Arise. Yeah. Roots is one of my favorite. Yeah, metal. I love yeah, Roots. Yeah, man, I love Roots. So but, uh, I, I saw we we camped out in front of uh, the music store in Hamilton, Valhalla. You know, we and we were like, <laughs> I just want to eat vinyl. And uh, 
<laughs> and, you uh, and it came out. We went back to our band room and we put it on. It was like, do 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 do. I'm going. Whoa! What happened? What the fuck is this, man? Yeah. And it just and the da the four four. Okay. Disappointing. <laughs> Oh. And then a rise comes out. Of it. Yes, yeah, that's <laughs> what we want to say. Yeah, mm. did you? We get also got um, Megadeth's album at the time, eh? And you took me on the bus, and that was the first. Oh yeah, um, yeah. Rust in peace, uh, rust and peace, man. Yeah, Megadeth and Auckland. Uh, wow. Megadeth. Wow. At the power station. Uh, it was at the power station. Uh, mm-hmm. It was. So the North Shore Event Centre. It yeah. was at the power station, okay. bro. <laughs> <laughs> Our listeners can fact check. Google, please. Google it. Yeah, someone Google it. Yeah, it was definitely the power station, eh? Did you get to meet the guys from Sepultura? Um, I did. No. No, I was front row, but that's as close as I got. Um, Do I've you been, have I've one of these I've got a photo, <laughs> actually, <laughs> on my phone with me and Max, Max. And he wore my, my Valhalla hat on stage. No way. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Fuck. Flossie jumped off the second tier and... Uh, wow. Well, Paulo Jr., bass player, um, wore a... Was it him that wore an all-black shirt? Paulo, yeah. Thanks. think so. Wore an all-black shirt and some photos, some... What was that band that did the support? was like uh, those guys from Taranaki, Mm. I think. The Nod. Quantum? Oh, no, The Nod, but there was another one with the fat singer. Mamas and the Papas? Oh, no. I was so so (laughs) fucked off we never got that. Adele? I'm out of here. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I was so fucked off we never got that support, eh? I thought we'd be good. But we waited outside and we met them and I got this great photograph with all the fucking... Band. All of Val Haller and uh, oh wow, yeah, I still got it. Just with Max. I've interviewed Max on the Max phone before. Max and Eagle was yeah, lovely, yeah, yeah. But uh, when he was Andreas, so Andreas, fire. Andreas was a cunt. He didn't want to. What really? He Andreas. And um, well, I haven't met the guy, but like in Brazil, he's like all of them, obviously. But like Andreas is the coolest. He's in, in all the shows. He's friends with everyone. So I think pro- maybe it was a bad day. Because and, and he's playing. Who, who did he tour with? Was it Megadeth or Slayer? He toured oh, with one of right. yeah. yeah. He, filled in. he filled in at one stage. Yes. I don't know yeah. that. Did he fuck? I can't. Yeah, I have yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, I have yeah. to reconsult. Wow, he did, man. The shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, we should yeah. uh, probably sign off. Okay, so <laughs> just before we do that, can we do we'll one question, question from our viewers? Because we asked people to send it a video. So this is the first time that we're going to actually put a, a, a video up. If is it okay, Taylor? If we get something. Cool. Shout out to Taylor. Yeah. Uh, oh, Taylor. Yeah. Making, this, making this all happen. My man. Now, is this going to come up here? It looks like. Ooh. I know, right? Yeah. Really? We got we got the mushrooms, we got the cactus, we got the, the animation. It's all psychedelic, but oh. We got the cactus. Oh, that's Mr. <laughs> that's Mr. Jason. Is he ready to go? The play was just in front of you. Oh. Hey, guys. Confession time up front. I'm a little bit of a new fan of uh, Devil Skin, so I only really discovered the band about 12 months ago, but I know you guys have been around for, for quite a long time in the industry, and uh, as a senior member of the industry myself <laughs> a little bit, I, I kind of get uh, curious about uh, other people who have been uh, kicking around the business for a long time. I like to do mentoring and, and working with uh, younger artists, and it kind of it's very rewarding, and it's, it's one of the things that I personally absolutely love. So I'm kind of just curious if if you guys are, are, are at that stage working with younger artists and and uh, helping support our industry from from the inside hey so Jason thanks man right so, so wait just just before do you know Jason no so wait just before we do that the, the answer so thank you so much Jason is the coolest guy so he um, he works for CFM, which is the Coromando yes. FM our <laughs> local radio station <laughs> yeah and he sends a shout out and CFM. And we do and we do the the gig guide together. So this is cool for me because yeah, that's a cool uh, video for the bro. Sweet. Yeah, man. And and we, we, we actually sent a shout out for you guys you uh, in the afternoon. So I'm I'm glad he sent a, a video. We have a different guide. name for CFM, eh? Yeah. There's a different. Sorry. 
No, 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 no
pretty poignant and I wrote this song and uh, I was in a band called Blackjack at the time we recorded it it's called Now You Fly and yeah it just resonated with a lot of people and, and it makes you feel like you've Maybe helped Maybe we'll play it tonight Yeah It makes yeah. you feel like you, you've helped them a little bit you know you've, yeah. you've helped people with grief and stuff you know it's it's just music so personal mm. and so powerful and if you get it then you get it and, yeah. and you get loved you know And that's I mean? been a, that's the same for me, you know. It's been so many times where people have asked me to, you know, wives of people that have died or whatever, to play at their gravesides and for people that I've never met, you know. And mm. you know, it's, it's I mean, it's pretty heavy when you're playing it. Some, you know, yeah, it's, it's the heaviest gig you'll ever do. But oh you, know, it's like, you know, to be asked is so special. Yeah. It's so yeah. special, and it's like a, it's like a but if responsibility. It's that you, but that if it's someone that you don't really know either but they just yeah loved you so much and you don't really know them yeah yeah and uh, that's uh, such a personal thing you know yeah ah. right, anyway right, let's not talk about death yeah. let's go and do the stick <sighs> yeah okay so the stalkers social media do, do we look for chris bailey do we look for if, if people want to to reach out to you guys or uh, call the duo we don't to really have a nah, social well you, you just do your thing you just we just do our thing Fantastic, when we get yeah. together, and and we don't have a social media presence as the stalkers, but you know, Chris Bailey. Easy to find Chris. Yeah, and yeah. Paul. easier to find Paul Martin, and you know, pretty easy to find you, mate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to hide these days. <laughs> <laughs> like you try hiding in pink and say with a red beard, bro. <laughs> we found him. We found him. So I'm sure you can find him too. Yeah. I'm You'll so glad fine. that you taught me with the whole thing with the beard uh, fluffing, Fl beard fluffing. Paul taught me beard fluffing today. Cause my beard is like, bang. He's <laughs> like, let me fluff it for there you. There is a technique, <laughs> Kapo. It's the uh, it's the uh, it's the really bad okay. kind of I'll, air dryer. I'll tell the, our listeners, mm. it's a, it's a very special technique. It involves tequila and drool mostly. So mm, that's right. <laughs> yeah, and that's beard, juice. beard tips from the X Man. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Fuck yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> well, I think it's about time we went on. Yes. Yeah. Hey, thanks, old base. Thank you so much for having us. Really thank you guys for coming. So much. Yeah, it's been emotional. I, love I know. I really want to go to Ireland now. Yeah, so like, do I. Yeah. Yes, yeah. so yeah. I want to go to County Sligo. So we do. Yeah, we'll go there and check yeah. out the dirt. We're going straight there. <laughs> the it's bog. Nice. The bog. It's not the dirt. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh we'll go check out the bog. But thanks, yeah. old base. Thank you oh, for having thank us. You. Yeah. Christine, thank you, Christine. Thanks Christine, for coming. Thank you, Christine for having us. It's been emotional. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and you guys, what a pleasure! Oh, well, it's an it's an honour to be back in Fidianga again, and and to play at this awesome pub. Smitty's. It's actually it, it's we used to have a residency at Smitty's for a good while, eh? But mm. uh, it's been at least six, fifteen or sixteen years, I'm yeah. thinking, eh? Since we played in. There. So, so we walked in there, so it was like, whoa. Where's the bar? <laughs> <laughs> so bring your nana, bring your mum and dad, bring them all yeah, along. Let's yeah. just have a have a bit of a party tonight. Fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Nice. Yeah. So for our friends in Fitianga, now we're done. Thank Straight you. to Smitty's. Let's have a party. And Odd Space Show, it's live every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And when we have these amazing people coming to town, we do these awesome pop-up shows. Okay? So stay tuned, follow us, and blah, 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 and you will hear more That's from us. Much. And... <laughs> Chris Bailey, Paul Martin, Devil's Kin, support music, yeah. support New Zealand music, motherfuckers. It's not that hard. It's great music. I need so. to get a name, eh? Like Devil's Kin. I need to be what? Naked Devil? Pick one. Naked, Naked Devil. Devil. Oh! No. That's too much pressure on the gigs now. Yeah. But it's when he started taking his clothes off at shows and, and he made the front page of the Waikato Times, oh. the naked wedding singer, his mum had a conniption. She that like was the worst thing, mate. My, my mother was driving home. Waikato Times, the uh, front page, oh the naked wedding singer with a guitar like a in front of his full page pitch. photo. The naked wedding singer. It always and makes look bad. My mother's driving home and she's going, she's going past she's going past the dairies and they have the the, uh, the cover page. The naked wedding singer. Oh, no. I was on Waiheke Island playing at fucking Lee Hart's wedding. <laughs> Who knows what's gonna be in the, the local newspaper next week, hey Chris? We'll they find out talk tonight. To me hey. for eight months, <laughs> and then he goes, Paul, do you wanna do some gigs? I'm going, keep your clothes on, mate, and I'm there. <laughs> No promises. <laughs>
Thank you so much, my guys. Hey, thanks, guys, right. for having us. We love thanks, it. guys, so much for having us. Eh? Thank you. See you, Autobase family. Bye. Subscribe to our channel, follow us, and I'll see you on Monday. <laughs> Bye, <Bok> Chai! <laughs> oh, hey,